Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Happy. For the next hour, my goal in life is to change the way you think about things. For the next hour, I want my rants and my opinions to broaden your horizon. And right now, we don't have a phone line. I'm working on it. I know I've been saying it for the last four months, but I've been a little bit busy with all the promotion gigs. I've been working for 102.5 The Bone, so it's been hard to figure everything out. But trust me when I say that very soon I will be able to take your calls and that would be at 856-49-HOPPY if you want to leave me a voicemail. Tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and I will be sure to see the tweets in real time here at my luxurious apartment in the weird north side of St. Pete. All right. Also, happy hour. Let's get it on the ballot for best local podcast here in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. I could not have said it in a more Midwest way. Tampa Bay by going to tinyurl.com slash hoppyhour2017. That's tinyurl.com slash hoppyhour2017. Let's get it on the ballot, baby. I would be honored to be on the ballot, and I'd be honored to win again. It's not like that's my crutch word, and I use it 100 times. All right, we have so much to get into. So I saw this headline here, and I've talked about this before, and I'm going to talk about it again. It says, girlfriend whose text drove her teen boyfriend to suicide. She basically gave him a play-by-play of why she... She gave him a play-by-play of why he should kill himself. And to me, this headline and this news article did not get enough attention. Now, I'm not sexist. I'm not a weird guy. But I will say with confidence, if this was a guy convincing his good-looking girl, if it was switched, to kill herself, there would be a lot more attention towards this. But since it's a good-looking girl who convinced her boyfriend back in July 2014 to kill himself, I feel like we feel awkward about it because we're like, oh, she was just going through emotional issues. Oh, she didn't mean to do it when she sent the text over and over again. And it says here that the girl that drove her boyfriend to suicide is enjoying freedom after being convicted of manslaughter as she faces jail time. Conrad Roy, age 18, took his own life after his girlfriend, Michelle Carter, encouraged him to kill himself. Then she listened to his last min Then she listened to him during his last minutes while he was on the phone but did not call 911. So basically he was saying, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and she just sat there and laughed at it. She didn't call the cops, she so she showed no sympathy. Basically, she's just a dirty, rotten imbecile. She was found guilty of manslaughter at her trial last week after he died in his own truck in Fairhaven in July 2014. And the best part about this girl is she does that feel bad for me face in court. She has those puppy eyes like, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I did it on accident. I didn't mean to send a text over and over again. You know how people played in court like Bill Cosby when he was in court last week and whenever he's been in court. He plays that character of, I'm the old guy, you know. I'm insane. This girl was playing the puppy eye face of, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. And to me, that's more infuriating for this girl that she doesn't even have sympathy that she caused her boyfriend, Conrad Roy, to kill himself. She has more sympathy that she's in trouble. And I really hope when she gets sentenced in August that she gets the maximum sentence possible. Because like I said, if this was a male, we would be crucifying him. Kind of like the whole thing, and I'll get into it because there's more teachers having sex with the kids, but it's kind of like when a male teacher has sex with a female or a male, we find it creepy. But there's a part of us, when we hear that a hot teacher banged a 15-year-old, we go, wow, that could have been us back in the day. It's just a weird, weird mindset that us adults have. And this is from the Daily Mail. Michelle Carter is seen in public for the first time since she was found guilty of manslaughter for the text she sent to her 18-year-old boyfriend before he committed suicide. An exclusive day, an exclusive DailyMail.com pictures. Carter, age 20, is seen emerging from her car to her family home in Plainsville. Here's my thing, and I will 
not defend her, but I will say this. She doesn't have the happiest face ever. The article, in a way, is clickbait because they're making it seem like she's out at the beach or she's smoking weed or she's partying. This girl, this dirty, rotten imbecile, knows she's in trouble and knows that she is going away for a while. So that's the only positive is that her face does not say anything positive. But she is wearing a shirt that's a Bob Marley lyric because she's so edgy and cool. It says, get up. Don't give up the fight. Oh, really? Is that what you told your boyfriend when he was saying, I don't want to kill myself, but you kept convincing him into it? You said to him, don't give up the fight. No, 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 no. You convinced him to kill himself. So shut up. You know, she thinks she's so edgy and cool wearing that t-shirt. Bob Marley is rolling over in his grave that this dirty, rotten broad is wearing this shirt. Right, there's more to this article, but tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Let me know what you think. It's just a sad, sad case because you look at her and she's crying in court when she was found caught. And I don't think she had any of those tears when she caused him to kill himself. I don't think she felt bad at all. I just think she's sad that she got caught. Last Friday, Carter was found guilty of manslaughter for her involvement in the suicide of her 18-year-old boyfriend, Conrad Roy. The 20-year-old was released on bail after the trial, and she will be sentenced on August 3rd. She faces up to 20 years in jail. Now, please, to the jury, please, if you are for some reason listening to Happy Hour, please sentence her to all 20 years, because this will set a precedent to future cases to any crazy men or female that are going to want to have their exes die. They'll go, oh, look at what happened to that Michelle Carter broad. If it happened to her, it can happen to anybody. But if you are lenient on her and you're easy on her, people are going to act up again. Because she bombarded, she bombarded her boyfriend with text messages urging him to act on his suicidal thoughts and saying that nobody would miss him and never to second think it even when he was second thinking it. And he was going, man, should I do it or not? She kept saying, do it, do it, do it. It's just absolutely infuriating that this didn't get more coverage in the media. And I think the issue is the last two years that it's been out in the news, I think the issue is it's been during the whole election and then the Trump news. And I think the media is afraid to cover on it because it's just a controversial case of a good-looking girl and a good-looking guy. I'm just saying. But hey, maybe I'm wrong in this. Maybe I'm a little bit over the top. Maybe I'm being too edgy. Tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Let me know what you think. If you're listening via the Hoppy Radio app, chat me. Let me know what you think. I got a comment in real time from Beth Rapke. She goes, do you remember doing your IQ test when you worked with Rover's Morning Glory? How could I forget? When I was on the show, they wanted to see who was smarter, me or Jeffrey. I had an IQ of about 92. I don't remember what Jeffrey's was, but that was some real original radio that came out of Cleveland. All right. We also have in the news here that they say that there is this new trend going on where parents are teaching their kids how to swim. And no, 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 no. This isn't through classes. This isn't through swimming with them and then watching them begin to do some laps. No, 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 no. This new method of having kids learning how to swim and infants as well is absolutely crazy. And this is from Cleveland19.com, the local news in Cleveland, as you would guess. Children between the ages of one to four are at a risk for drowning and parents don't seem to care as they are throwing their infants into the water to make sure they are drown proof. If you have that mindset that you think this is a good method to teach your infant age one to four how to swim or even a six year old how to swim or even a 10 year old, anybody that doesn't know how to swim, if you think this is a good method, then I'm sorry. You should not be a parent. I'm not even being edgy. I'm not being a shock jock. I'm not being rude. All I'm saying is 
If you think that this is a good method for teaching kids how to swim, then there is something wrong with you in the head and you should not be a parent. Because there are an average of about 10 accidental drownings a day, but whatever. That wouldn't happen to my kid because the way I would toss him into the water, I would make sure, you know, that everything would work out. It's not like lifeguards are ever busy looking at Snapchat or sending texts or saving lives. It's not like they're ever busy doing things, you know. Things can happen. You toss that kid into the water and then he drowns. Is it really worth the lesson? Here's what one parent said. I liked it because it's tough to watch somebody else teach them how to swim. I thought it was a cool method, cool method, to toss them into the water and hope they don't drown. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is like the first scene in Idiocracy when those rich people that were smart couldn't afford to have kids, but the dimwits kept just popping out kids like they're like they're uh, Tic Tacs. This is the issue: is these idiots are having kids. The idea is to throw the child into water and let their guts and let their brain take over to flip over and float. Hmm. Maybe that would work if you're seven years old and over. But when you're between the ages of one to four, I don't think your first mindset is to, you know, just begin to float. I think a six-month-year-old like they did is the youngest age they did it. I don't think the kid's just gonna go, oh yeah, it's time to swim. I think the kid's gonna think, oh shit, I just shit myself, mommy, can you clean up my diaper? Just saying. It says here, if your child is to fall into water, fall into a swimming pool or pond, they are able to quickly get on their back and float. Yes, after a conventional swimming lesson, not after tossing them into water. And it says, typical lessons, teach your child to be comfortable in the water. Josh says the, or no, the woman in this article says that that isn't enough. I teach them a sequence to go from tummy to back in the event that they need air to rest. And I don't care if these are official classes and that they are the age between one to four. It's just a really, really idiotic idea. And I think it's a case of in 2017, Parents are lazy, we have ADHD, everybody has ADHD, so nobody has the attention span to have the patience to teach their kids how to swim. So they go, okay, what would be an easy method to teach my kid how to swim? Oh, just toss him in and hope he survives. <laughs> my girlfriend chimed in, LOL babe, that's how I learned how to swim. I would never do that though. All right, you're in the background. How old were you when you learned how to swim that way, though? Five. Okay. You're kind of proving the point of the article, but it I'm wasn't like you swimmer. had a... I'm a great swimmer. But you are a great swimmer. Okay. Interesting radio. You know, you can't see her or hear her, but I'm talking to her in the background. All right. Here's the deal. We're going to come back on Hoppy Hour and get into much more. But tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Get the Hoppy Radio app in the Google Play and iOS shop by searching up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, and help Hoppy Hour get on the ballot for Best Local Podcast by the Creative Loafing of Tampa Bay by going to tinyurl.com slash Hoppy Hour 2017. There, you can vote me as Best Local Podcast. They do have the category of Best Local Internet Radio Show, but I've never been a fan of that category because if you're on the internet like I am right now on Spreaker, this just in, I don't think you can hear me on the radio yet. It's not like you can tune on to 102.3 or 101.1 here in town and there's a frequency where my show's on air, so I've always been kind of thrown off by the term internet radio. So if you want to vote me as Best Local Internet Radio Show, I wouldn't mind that, but Trust me, I would rather win Best Local Podcast here in Tampa Bay. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Do not touch that computer mouse, that tablet, however the hell you are listening to my show. The reason I wait is because my laptop is so slow that when I... I'm telling them. I wasn't talking to you. 
Yeah, but the reason I wait like nine seconds before I go to break and I What's do my drop, because what happens is when I edit the show afterwards in Adobe Audition, it'll say, we'll be right back on Hoppy Hour. And then the voice is already playing on it because I have slow internet here in my apartment in St. Pete. So that's why you see me go and wait like nine seconds. I was going to say something mean, but then I held back my... Embroidery factory here in Tampa Bay, and they provide the highest well, I mean, quality spray print in all Florida. Doesn't and matter. It's what? dumb. They use the top-notch equipment and top well, grade okay, to so ensure you that hair, their direct-to-garment prints are okay, reached at a standard that they can be proud of. I understand. It's and just dumb. And you're going, oh, man, oh, how can I get into contact with such a great company? Trust me, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is give them a call right now at A13-374-9544. That's A13-374-9544. Go on YouTube and teach how to teach your kid how to swim. Literally, you can learn anything on YouTube. That's at 4817 South West Shore Boulevard. And go to their website, TampaBayBands.com. Trust me when I say that they are the best in the bay. I, I, I don't care. Crazier things can happen. It's just not smart. Chicago to Cleveland to Tampa Bay. You are plugged into Happy Hour. All right. Yeah! All right, back to Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And it seems like this is happening all the time. And before I get into that, I just want to say that my old co-host from WNUR 89.3 in Chicago, Ryan Risky is watching. What up, homie? It says here from foxnews.com that a married teacher who was a mom was taken in for multiple sex romps in her car with a teenage boy. And listen, when I was a teenager, that would have been the hottest thing to happen to me. But as I grow older, I just see how immature teenagers are and you're literally just taking advantage of their emotions. Because recently I was hanging out with one of my friends and at his house were some kids that were like 17 years old and their mindset is just so much different than that of anybody that's like in their 20s. Their mindset is, I have a nice car. Their mindset is, I have to get laid. Their mindset is, I have to get laid. 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 It's just a completely different life because they're living with their parents. They have no worries in the world. So when these teachers are having sex with these kids, they're literally taking advantage of them. And it's just kind of creepy. And it's weird to think that like, I would be in class and I would call over my math teacher and pretend that I needed help just to check her out. And I look back on it and I go, man, I was a creep. A Connecticut high school teacher was taken in for allegedly having sex a handful of times, no pun intended, with a special education kid, then denying and getting rid of the evidence of the acts. Laura Ramos, age 31, was charged Tuesday with second-degree sexual assault, according to the Connecticut Post. Police took her in, and she is a wife and a mother, after having sex with an 18-year-old kid while she was teaching at Central High School in Bridgeport. All right. And maybe somebody is watching that can explain this to me. Is it illegal because he was a special needs kid? Is it illegal because he was in school at the time? Because I thought the legal age was 18 to have consensual sex with it. Even if the age was 18 and it was conventional, I would think it's creepy because it's a woman who took advantage of somebody that's not all there, I'm just saying. Authorities were called to the high school after another kid reported a sexual assault to officials. The kid, named Witness One, told school officials that Ramos began sending texts to him as a normal teacher, helping out a kid. 
And then she began to get dirtier. Okay. One has to wonder if the first kid was enjoying getting laid and then the second kid was getting kind of jealous that the first kid was getting laid or just has a big mouth and is a snitch. Like he's one of those kids that would go to the principal and say there's going to be an underage drinking party at Timmy's house. So you have to wonder if this kid was a snitch. Either way, I'm glad the teacher got reported, but you just have to wonder what type of kid this is. Because he said that the teacher and the he says that the teacher and the kid would make eye contact and flirt in class. Well, that's like the perfect way to get caught. If you're a teacher and you want to have a sexual romp and you want to somehow get away with it, I wouldn't be flirting with the kid in class, but I'm glad she did because she got caught. Ramos would allegedly complain to the kids that her man wasn't having sex with her right and that she would buy the kids weed. It almost seems like this teacher wanted to get caught. It almost seems like this teacher was fed up with life and didn't want to get a divorce. So she's like, how can I find a way to go into prison and to get away from my husband without being in trouble? How can I find a way that I won't have to work anymore and I can just hang behind the cells but not get a divorce? All right, tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and I see that Jeff Adams is commenting live on Hoppy TV on the Facebook visual version of Hoppy Hour, and he said, hey now. Now, Jeff Adams is a very talented dude, and I've been sitting in, and I guess you could say I'm one of the co-hosts of his show, The Jeff Adams Show, so to check it out, go to Facebook and join The Jeff Adams Show Facebook fan page or Facebook group. And like TJAS Media, the Jeff Adams Show Media, and you can watch it live every single Thursday. Also in the news, and this is coming out of Mr. Obvious, more than half of all selfies are about parents and are taken to show outward wealth and outward power. Now, I was looking at my social media prior to meeting my girlfriend and I was really, really bad with selfies. Like, I run the board occasionally during the week for the best of my Kelta overnights, but I always run the board every Sunday morning, 12 to 6, airing the best of Johnny B, the best of my Kelta, and then the best of Roger and JP. And I used to take selfies of me running the board every single week or if I were to run the board let's say two nights in a row I would take two selfies and I would get all dressed up and I would have teeth whitener on my mouth that day to make sure my teeth look good and I would put in hair gel and I was a complete effing douchebag and me and my girlfriend did this game we looked at my social media accounts and my selfies have gone down a good amount there have been some times that my average 50% of narcissism comes out. I think it's more I just want to prove people wrong. I don't think it's narcissism. I just think I'm self-conscious, so I like to show people what I'm doing, even though it's not much. But I wouldn't say that I'm a narcissist. But I will say this. There is something about my generation, the millennials, where you need to take selfies to let people know what you are doing. You need to take selfies when you go to the gym because it's not like people will notice your muscles when you wear a really tight shirt the next day and you talk about being a vegan. Or they'll have to take selfies in front of their vegan meal. And speaking of that, I had vegan food about five days ago at a party. It was all vegan food. And I really, really, really wanted to like it. I wanted it to live up to the hype that all the vegans brag about 24-7 on social media. 
I wanted it to live to the hype of all the vegans that posted on Instagram or Twitter. Look at my meal. I really, really wanted to like a good vegan meal. But without getting descriptive, let's just say later on, when I went to the restroom, I wasn't sick, but it just didn't feel right when I went number two. It just, it didn't feel right. And during the whole day, my whole body felt flat in a way that when I have a nice meal, like if you go to Hungry Harry's in Land Lakes, amazing barbecue, or you go to a Chinese buffet, or you get chicken wings from B-dubs, or you get anything that has meat, you feel full. And if you eat the right amount, it's the perfect full. If you eat too much food, then you get an ache in your gut. But if you eat the right amount of meat and the perfect meal, and you mix it with veggies and potatoes, you have a really good meal. And salad, but if you eat too much, you get sick. But I had vegan crab cakes, even though they're not really crab cakes because they're worth crab in them. Had vegan macaroni and cheese. And I had kale. And to me, the only thing I was close to liking was the mac and cheese because I don't like real mac and cheese. So it was more like having a dish from an Italian. But I didn't like it. But the worst thing on that menu by far was kale. It just was bitter. And it wasn't even good bitter. It wasn't like... Like, you know when you have something bitter and it tastes good and you go, it's an acquired taste? Kale was an awful acquired taste. The aftertaste in your mouth, I literally need to go and grab a Sprite. And I'm trying to drink less soda, even though it's not working. And I literally had to down the Sprite to get the taste out of my mouth. And I see that Jeff Adams chimed in. They're more like vegan crab cakes. Ha ha, I get what you did there. Cue the laugh track sound effect. All right, back to the article. They say that more than 2.5 mil, million selfies are taken each day. And it says that women share the most selfies. And they are between the ages of 18 to 35 years old. And I think the biggest reason is with social media, there's a lot of pressure for women to look hot 24-7. And I think the other reason why it's women is because a lot of times, and I'm not being mean, but it's the chubbier girls that want to feel good about themselves, so they do the 50% of the selfie where you don't see the bottom half of their body, but they show the top part, and you go, man, she's good looking, and then you go on a Tinder or Bumble date, and then you go, ah, what happened? I thought you were hot. Or I think it's a case of females at times they want to show you that they're working out and they got their pump in at the gym. So what they do is they get all sweaty and then put on a little bit of makeup so they're not completely ugly. And they go, look at me, I'm getting my gains in. And I think when males take selfies too, it's them overcompensating because when they grew up, they weren't very popular. So now there's a way to project that you're cool. And to project that, look at me, I'm with a bunch of dudes at a male-oriented nightclub where there's not many hot chicks in Cleveland, and we're partying, bro. We're drinking, we're drinking shots, bro. Or it's males that are at the gym, and they used to be fat. And when you first take selfies of losing weight, it's cool. You'll get about 50 likes like I did in 2011 when I lost weight. But then it just becomes a repetitive issue of beating a dead horse where you go okay we got it you like to work out and the absolute worst when it comes to working out and people bragging about going to the gym it isn't the selfie of them sweaty it isn't the selfie of them let's say jogging it's when you're in crossfit and you have to brag about it in front of the crossfit logo or you're in CrossFit and you literally are giving your cell phone to somebody and you go, oh my God, these deadlifts won't count unless we film it and we hopefully get a hundred views on Snapchat. I'm just saying. Speaking of Snapchat, I will admit to this. 
I have this really, really weird addict, addiction rather, where I'm proud of what I've accomplished in life, even though it's very minuscule and it's not very important. Radio in Tampa Bay. I'm honored to be here, but on the great spec on the great spectrum of things. And when you think about it with all the issues in the world, Ryan Hoppy doing his podcast in Tampa Bay isn't much. But I am proud of what I've done. So whenever I post on Snapchat, and this is the first day I have not looked at it, I literally will view who viewed my Snapchats and I will get excited. Because I go, oh, this radio DJ looked at it. Or this girl that screwed me over looked at it. And in my narcissist brain, I go, I'm proving her wrong. Even though I'm happy with the love of my life, my girlfriend, I go, yes, I'm proving the haters wrong, babe. She's looking at me with anger. What are you feeling, babe? Come to the mic. Why don't you want to come to the microphone? Why are you shy all of a sudden? I look ugly. You do not look ugly. If anything, I look ugly with my Sonic the Hedgehog haircut from, from 1992 and my tight shirt that shows off my very average muscles. Thank you for announcing that while I'm doing a live podcast. I want ice cream. Here are the selfie categories that are the most popular. Appearance, social, ethnicity, travel, health and fitness, hobbies. Somebody says, bring her to the mic. Come on, do it if you're cool. If you don't, then I will be heartbroken and I will not cuddle tonight. That wasn't even a threat because she doesn't care. I see that Jeff Adams is watching this. I appreciate it. All nine of my viewers right now, I'm just killing it. Man, I am just doing great in the ratings. If I had a radio show, I'd be through the roof. Yep. Cricket sound effect. That's how I feel. All right. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour, and we have a lot to get into. I want you to chat me live like Craig is and like Jeff Adams is. I would have said Craig's last name. It's Craig L. He does a very great podcast, but I don't know how to pronounce his last name, and I didn't want to say it wrong. But if you watch my Happy Hour, Happy TV video portion of the show on Facebook, you can check out his podcast by clicking on his profile. I appreciate you guys watching. And if you're watching and you haven't chimed in, let me know you're watching because it's a Friday night at 8.45 p.m. And besides my girlfriend hanging out in my small apartment. I feel all alone, you know? All right, we will be right back. Do not touch that computer mouse, that tablet, however the hell you're listening to this show. Just gotta wait to go to break because then it's just gonna play over. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is Ryan Hoppy from the award-winning Hoppy Out. You what? I'm here okay. today to talk about my guy, Even better. Joe Sale, of the Tampa Image Factory. About four months ago, I needed somebody to take press shots for me for my podcast, and it was hard to find people because it seems like in this day and age, everybody is I love how I said, try not to drink so much soda. You drink a laid-back guy who was willing to work with schedule, and I immediately dug the vibe of his office. The things they have there include family portraits, commercial work for your company, they can make images for your events, your big day when you're going to get married at your wedding, and they even make photography for products and anything you need for the home or office. And if you're sitting here and you're going, man, man this sounds like quite the deal. No, I just man, have dumb commercial I get into contact with such a trustworthy and hardworking oh, photographer no like Joe Sale? Trust me, it's not rocket science. All you got to do is call him at 813-417-2626. It's 813-417-2626. Or you can check Thank him you. out online at tampaimagefactory.com. That is tampaimagefactory.com. And if you go there and tell them that I sent you, he will hook you up with a top-notch deal. Trust me when I say Joe Sale of the Tampa Bay Image Is the best in the Bay. Best in the Bay.
Oh yeah! All right, welcome back to Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And this next article, I can relate to 110%. This next article hits me in my special spot. Because, you know, it happened to me. This next article is something that when I look at it, I go, man, poor guy. This is from the Daily Mail. Catfishing victim, age 19. But the next part is the part that I didn't react on. I just look like a bitch on a Cleveland radio show. Opens fire on a man who posed as an attractive woman to begin a relationship with him on an online dating site. And here is the two reasons why this is different than when I got catfished by the Cleveland Morning Show. When I got catfished by the Cleveland Morning Show, it's not hard, it's not rocket science to find it online, just Google my name. They do this thing, kind of like Howard did with Dial a Date. What they do is something called the Thursday Hookup, and it's where you have girls come in and they talk about their sex life, and dudes call looking to get a date. So I met the girl when I was trying out to answer phones for the Cleveland Morning Show, and what happened was she gave me her number, but the number was really Rover's Google Voice number, and then he gave it to Chocolate Charlie. So then what happened was this. Then I think I'm talking to the girl, and then what happens is then I'm at the hotel that iHeartMedia paid for, and Chocolate Charlie and Chain Smasher come in, and then I'm catfished. But it wasn't like this guy. He was on a social media site called Tagged. And if you're not on OkCupid or Tinder or Bumble, then you're out of your mind. If you're using any of these other sketchy dating apps, then you're asking for it to happen. It says that Wilkerson showed up at the man's house one day in the car. The man that catfished him. And here's my thing. By no means am I defending the guy who came by the house and shot the guy. But I will say this. When you catfish somebody, you're messing with their emotions. So what did you expect the guy was going to do? Just forget about it and move on, you're literally taking a risk when you catfish somebody. It says here, and he pulled out a gun and shot the man four times. A humiliated 19 year old was taken in for trying to shoot a man dead who catfished him on a dating app pretending to be an attractive woman. And that was the other thing from when I was single and on the dating apps was whenever it was a really, really, really attractive woman, like a bombshell that you would see at some fancy event like a gala, that's when you knew it was fake because she has no reason to be on a dating app because she's that attractive. So he fell for that. Chauncey Wilkerson was taken in on charges of illegal use of a weapon and aggravated assault with a firearm after officers responded to a hit and run at his house on Monday. The Baton Rouge team told police he met the driver on a dating app called Tag. And then it just has the guy's address, which I wouldn't really appreciate if they put it on a national site like the uh, day, like the day, like the Daily Mail. Man, that's the one annoying thing about my speech impediment is it'll come out every once in a while and then I'm like a broken Elvis record. But then I just fight through it. So there's that article for you guys. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio or by using the Hoppy Radio app and let me know what you think. This next article doesn't have much to it, so I'm not really going to say much about it, but a man was taken in for uploading and filming Deadpool 
not the second one at a pre-screening no he just had Deadpool on his TV and he Facebook lived it copyright is something that they don't mess around with you might not be taking in every single time but at the same time it's something you don't mess around with I mean if they shut down my happy hour video after seven seconds of playing Eminem they literally are not messing around they literally are not joking when they say that they will take you in also in the news actor Dan Day Lewis says that he is quitting acting he has always been a very quirky guy he has always been an actor that wanted attention and that needs to have everything about him like every actor ever so trust me when I say that Dan Day Lewis is going to miss is going to miss the attention that he got for playing such characters as Abraham Lincoln and he'll be back and this is from Variety three-time Oscar winner Dan Day Lewis like you don't think he's gonna want to win another Oscar you don't think that he's gonna try and fight through it no 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 he'll be back this is all for attention probably for some next role here's what it says here this is from variety.com and I will tweet out the link at Ryan Hoppy Radio, which is my Twitter account. Three-time Oscar winner Dan Day Lewis, widely considered one of the best actors, is retiring from acting. The 59-year-old who has played presidents, writers, and gang leaders in his career that has spanned four decades has one final film awaiting release, an untitled drama set in the world of high fashion. It is set to hit theaters and be released on December 25th, 2017, and he is reunited with Paul Thomas Anderson, who directed Dan D. Lewis's Best Actor Oscar movie in 2007, There Will Be Blood. He did not give a release, he did not give a reason, rather, for his retirement. His spokeswoman, Leslie Dart, said Dan D. Lewis will no longer be working as an actor. He is immensely grateful to all his collaborators and audiences over the many years. This is a private decision, eh, is it? If it was a private decision, we wouldn't have heard about him. But when you have to make it all about you and announce it to the media, it's not private. Trust me. He is the only actor to ever win three Oscars. He was honored for the title role in Spielberg's Lincoln. For his turn as an he also was in there will be blood and he also was in the movie my left foot and i heard they're gonna make a sequel called my right hand ha ah, ha get it oh man i had to put it in the laugh track sound effect there he has been praised over the years for his shape-shifting acting and versatility he is known for going to crazy length for his performances frequently remaining in character off screen he is the son of poet Cecil Day Lewis and, Eng and English actress Jill Balkin and he made his screen debut at the age of 14 in a bit part in 1971's Sunny Bloody Sunday all right to me, I think this is just going to be something where we haven't really talked about Dan Day Lewis in a few years, so you have to make it all about you, like he has over the years when he talks about being a character actor that is never out of character, like he did when he played Abraham Lincoln. But hey, time will tell. Maybe he will, you know, end up not acting ever again. But I will respect him if he does that. But if he ends up being like Brett Favre and he makes a comeback, then that will probably annoy the hell out of me. All right, here's the deal. Happy hour is about to end. I have a ton of NBA news that I want to get into. But what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up doing these 7 to 10 minute shows where I just talk about the NBA because I want to have my opinion out there. And I usually end up talking about the NBA at the end of the show. And there's a very little chance that people listen to all 48 minutes of this so you miss my opinion on it which I'm proud of so coming Monday NBA news I want to come up with some catchy name let me know what you think Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com 
at Ryan Hoppy Radio on Twitter, and add me on Snapchat, at Hoppy Radio. Let me know what you think. Go to my website, RyanHoppyRadio.com, and like me on Gram, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. All right, the show has come to an end. I appreciate you guys watching and spreading the word. It means a lot. I'm going to try and do more and more shows as often as I can. I am out of here. Bye.